problems. I have a, a, a short presentation that it's ensured to be short because the battery on this machine dies very quickly. <laughs> so uh, I, I promise I'm going to go through this quickly. Um, uh, the, the subtitle here is not crypto. Um, uh, and for those of you that came to talk about Bitcoin, I'm sorry to disappoint. I'm involved in a couple of projects here in Pittsburgh that I would like to just begin to socialize related to blockchain. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hopefully, uh, I'll be able to convey to you why you ought to be interested in this, but uh, maybe not. Um, uh, it stems from really a question of, so why should I even be interested, Rob, in, in, in who are you? Uh, I mean, why should I be interested? I am uh, a longtime entrepreneur. I go back a fair ways here. Um, I work for the Congress, I work for a company called Prodigy way back, uh, 10 years before the internet. Um, I worked for a while as a professor at Georgetown University. I founded a company in the 90s that went public. I uh, founded another one in the early 2000s. Uh, and I'm currently involved in a company called Thematics. That's what makes me money, not the, not the endeavors that I'm about to tell you about. And oh, by the way, I just took the bar exam and, and, Pat, and, and a member of the PA bar. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. And, and, and there, there, there's going to be a reason why that's important. So that's, that's a real, real quick uh, thumbnail of where I'm coming from on this. And there are two initiatives, endeavors here that I really want to expose to you. One concerns uh, a blockchain and the law symposium that will take place here in Pittsburgh. Uh, in early 2020, um, and the other concerns, smart contracts. Uh, I'm not going to be nearly as smart about smart contracts, but uh, I, I do have some interesting things to say. I've always been interested in the application of these new technologies, uh, rather than in the, uh, the development of the technologies per se. Uh, so I'm interested very much in the commercialization. So we'll get to that with smart contracts. The first, first notion here is the symposium of blockchain and law. Uh, I'm in conversation with some folks at Duquesne and at Pitt uh, and at some uh, law firms downtown here to bring together um, a bunch of resources, a bunch of experts related to the application of blockchain to legal concepts. Um, if this is something I've been involved in for a long, long time, going way back, the work I did for, for the Congress was with an outfit called the Office of Technology Assessment. And his job was to figure out what are the policy implications of all this technology change? Well, here I'm concerned with what are the business implications of all this technology change? And the first thing that we're going to address as, as Pit, the Pittsburgh Center for Digital Transformation is this question of blockchain and law. What, what is blockchain about to do to some fairly stay, stable legal concepts that have been around forever? Um, and so the, the agenda, the tentative agenda for this looks something like this. The first, the first part of it might very well have to do with blockchain and contract. Uh, but as well, there's much, much broader implications here having to do with blockchain, real property, and estates. Uh, anytime you buy a, a property, uh, what happens is you're issued a deed. If you're at all smart, you're going to take that deed down to the register of deeds downtown Pittsburgh and record it so that whoever sold you that contract, or whoever sold you that property, can't then turn around and resell it to somebody else. You want to go on record with this. Well, that's a very, very natural, very, very logical uh, application of a blockchain technology to record that in an irrefutable way uh, uh, that uh, might ostensibly live forever. Um, same goes for intellectual property, perhaps. Um, you know, if I've created a, some particular work, uh, the big bugaboo has always been up until now, uh, how do I protect that? Well, uh, it's not that blockchain necessarily is going to prevent counterfeiting of your work. But certainly, you can establish uh, uh, irrefutable uh, ownership over that work and, and build licensing a licensing program based on that. Uh, blockchain and public records, the, the old function of a notary, uh, attesting that uh, this signature is, is 
my signature and that it was in fact recorded by me on this date, uh, that's a natural for a blockchain application. Um, as are chain of custody records, say in criminal cases. Uh, you know, wh who, who possessed this gun? And how, when did it change hands? At what point in time? Uh, how, is there a way to prove it in a way that's irrefutable? Um, and then finally, this blockchain and incorporation, um, uh, what about uh, the issuance of stock uh, for a, a corporations? Uh, is, can that be done uh, using a blockchain application? Th these are all sound like kind of uh, far out things, but you've got a lot of cases of point where the, the Cook County Registrar of Deeds in Chicago has act actually adopted blockchain for recording deeds and mortgages. Uh, you've got this, the state of Delaware, uh, which is the largest state for incorporation in the United States. All corporations, most big corporations, are incorporated in Delaware today. Uh, and they've adopted a blockchain for the re recordation of, of uh, stock certificates, uh, for the recordation of the original articles of incorporation, uh, and all kinds of public records related to the management of corporations. So, this stuff for real. And so we've got this blockchain and lock symposium is still very much in the formative stages. And we think there's going to flow uh, some intellectual property coming out of this uh, and something valuable. And we're, we're planning on this not only to be an in Pittsburgh uh, conference, but something that could be offered worldwide virtually through the technologies that the Keynes are going to offer. So that's item number one. I just wanted to let you know about it. Uh, item number two relates to this smart contract, and here I'm working with some folks to actually put a company together that uh, we're, gen we're calling for right now, placeholders, general contract automation. And the notion is um, a contract, it, it turns out, uh, it, it, you cannot legally write a contract for another person. Only a lawyer can do that. That's the state monopoly on, on the practice of law. And so, if these spark contracts are going to really, really ever come about, uh, somehow, at least under the current regime, lawyers are going to have to be involved. But the really interesting question comes, well, if, if, we're, if we write a natural language contract, there's an intent behind that contract. There's a, a meaning behind it that's given to it by the lawyers uh, that are involved in negotiating it. Well, if I write a spark contract that, say, uh, decrements my bank account, or a smart contract that says, upon execution, I file a UCC um, uh, 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 claim on, on the underlying property here, I have a secured interest. Or if the contract manages the purchase order process for uh, my, sell, my sale of widgets over time, um, how do I know that what's written in the code Solidity for the Ethereum blockchain. In, uh, there's, an, there's this group called the Accord Project that's involved very much in smart contracts today. They have their own programming language. These are all object-oriented programming languages. But how do I know, as an attorney sitting down looking at this contract, that it actually implements the intent of the natural language contract? That's a difficult problem. Uh, and so this general contract automation company, that's one of the problems that it wants to grapple with. To, to act as a really a service bureau or a service agency um, authoring these smart contracts. So we're just getting that thing off the ground and there's an enormous interest here in Pittsburgh among the private law firms downtown. Um, that's, that's all I have to present really and the so what here is I, I'm, I'm just wanting to expose these things. Uh, I, I'm wanting to socialize them because that's how these uh, that's how these endeavors are really perfected, right? That's how um, I'm able to identify and people volunteer their own interests and in wanting to come and join. And I welcome any joiners. I welcome critics. I welcome people who want to praise me. Um, I welcome uh, recommendations for people I ought to be speaking to. Uh, if you have more information and can help educate me on things that uh, many things, I'm ignorant on. I welcome that. I welcome your direct involvement either as programmers or engineers or as lawyers or business people in any way, shape, or form. But um, Rebecca was just 
kind enough to let me kind of do a little show and tell tonight and explain to you what I'm involved in and I welcome whatever kind of interest involvement you want to have. Off to the right here is my contact information. Uh, that's my little company that actually makes the money go. None of these do yet. Uh, and so uh, I, I welcome a later phone call, an email, whatever. But that's really the extent of my uh, my presentation. Yeah.